Hello everyone, welcome back. This is video number seven with Dean Braxton. Uh, Dean, in case you this is the first video you picked up, Dean was actually dead for an hour and 45 minutes. The Lord brought him into heaven and he's sharing us some of the things that the Lord showed. So we were just finishing uh, Dean and knowing people in heaven, recognizing people in heaven. So continue on, Dean. Thank you. Well, you know, one of the people you asked me about was Elijah and where he was. When I got there, I like to always say Jesus was about 10 or 11 o'clock to the left of me. I was on my hands and knees. Around him was a half circle. I say being because they're being everything that God created them to be. Some of these people or some of these beings were um, redeemed. That we talked about what the redeemed were. Those were people that had accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior on this planet. And now they are in heaven, and they're called the redeemed. And then some of them I call heavenly creations. And what I mean by that, they were what we would call angels, and they are there too. So they're mixed among each other, and, and Jesus is facing them, and he's communicating with them. And I, in the book I talk about it, he was strategizing. And what I mean by that, he was, he was receiving information from the Father, and then he was taking that information and giving it to those heavenly creations. And then they would leave, and they would head down to the planet and do whatever God was um, asking them to do. And that signals that Elijah was in. He was in that group. And uh, this brings up a very uh, uh, area that most people, um, you know, I don't know if they have a hard time with it, but most of the time I don't even bring it up because it's just so way outside of the box of what our thinking. Uh, and, and I talked about it a little bit in the book, but it's the word angel. Angel really means messenger of God. Mm -hmm. And to me and you, Frank, really, it, we, we're angels in the sense that we're messengers of God. I don't want to make us out to be angels that we're heavenly creations right. um, with the Father. But in the sense of the word, what it means in the Hebrew and in the Greek, it just means someone that's sent out. And so that's all it really means. And so <clears throat> when we say angels, we make them out to be uh, 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 like a, um, a, um, uh, a, I won't say a culture, but a, a being that's a special being. In reality, they're creations of God that were sent down to this planet to give a message. Right. Well, there, there you've got this group of, of, of beings, and mixed among those beings are redeemed. And the redeemed also were given um, tasks to do on this planet. Now, that's why someone says, oh, 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 oh be, you're, you're really going across the line now. But there is a scripture that very much says that this is possible due to the fact that Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration right. on earth, and there were two beings which really were uh, redeemed. You know what I mean? Right. They, they redeemed in the sense that um, they were looking forward to the promise, and it was Moses and Elijah, and they were talking to Jesus at that moment. Now, uh, so we know it's possible for God to be able to take those that have gone on to be with Him and send them back to this planet right. and, and, and minister on this planet. So when you talk about Elijah being among that group, man, that's, I could see that very clearly because that group literally is, is the group that Jesus is using right now to really help me and you out on this planet. Wow. <laughs> with right. Now, and the scriptures do say in the book of Revelation, and I would suggest everybody read that book and you will be blessed because there is a blessing for anybody that yeah, either hears yeah. or reads it. But in uh, Revelation, it does say that Elijah must come first. And yeah. this is one of the reasons why we believe that it's going to be Moses is, that will be with him is because mm -hmm. of the Mount of Transfiguration where Elijah and Moses both appeared. And uh, both of their ministries was uh, similar to what, uh, obviously, Moses took the Jews out of Egypt and all the plagues and everything that took place and we see those things similar in the book of Revelation so we can't say for sure that it's Moses but it, there's a good possibility that, they, that he will be and let me ask you this then why you were in heaven was any of this confirmed were you able to understand that Moses was coming or was that never brought up it was never, it was never really confirmed to me okay. uh, but let me tell you why because there were a number of heavenly um, beings there are redeemed that also um, meet the criteria of um, the going, uh, of coming back and, and, and coming, you know, back on this planet. Mm -hmm. And so that was something to, to, to know that there are a number of, uh, of, of, of uh, what we say, redeemed that could fit that criteria. And it didn't, and it wasn't limited there. It was almost like you could be that person, right? You know? Uh, is that is that broad? 
is that is that good? You know, in the sense of um, of uh, doing what the Father wants us to do. You know, as I as I tell people a lot of times, I didn't volunteer to come back to this planet. I would have stayed there, but I did want to do what Jesus wanted me to do. Right. Yeah, okay. I, I will tell you that. I may not have volunteered, but I wanted to do what Jesus wanted me to do. Oh, not yeah, what that's. You know, I I often tell my wife, look at it. If anything were to happen with me, don't you dare think about bringing me back. <laughs> but you never know when you get there. When you actually see the Father, uh, and you're looking at Jesus face to face. You know, if He tells you, look, I I need you. You know, even Paul. He, you know, he would rather be in heaven, but he knew his place yeah. to go. So, and he was yeah, actually right. caught up into the third heaven. So, Dean, what about the other, the signs? Now, we were, there was two more, well, I believe. Yeah, this one right here, which is really one of the most significant ones for me in, in terms of getting out, it's the last, the last two, really, but this one right here, that which is evil will look good even to the sons and daughters of God. And the sons and daughters of God will grow in prayer in that time, and new eyes will open, spiritual eyes. They will see from their heart. And... The reason I, I um, um, think this is so significant is because, now, each and every one of these, again, they were not verbally given to me. They were pictures given to me. And it's not a picture just like a still uh, photo. They literally, when I was, when these things were happening, they were, they were uh, uh, shown to me like a film would be shown. So even this right here, I remember when Jesus was downloading this inside of me, and I was getting it from him. I remember him showing me how the visual deception would take place among the the the, 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 the Christians. They would they would start because of not praying and because of not interceding, because of not spending time with their father and Jesus and knowing who he is. They would start uh, believing other things that were outside of the kingdom of God, as though they were inside the kingdom of God. You know, it, and I could see that. They, it was like uh, you looking uh, straight ahead, and then all of a sudden you start looking to the left of you slowly but surely. And what's to the left of you is not really uh, part of the kingdom of God. It's not God has nothing to do with it. But all of a sudden you're not facing no longer Jesus or the mm, Father uh, right. with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You're facing to the left of you, looking at something completely different, right. believing that God. Right. Yes. That's what was going yeah. on. And those are brothers and sisters. We're not talking to people that don't know Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know, what you're, I know what you're saying there. And uh, just recently, I, I was blessed with having my book going to Kenya. And I'm getting all of these pictures back with all of these people walking around with my book. And then they started this last crusade. Uh, Last Chronicles Crusade in Kenya, and they started the second one just recently. But I had to write the pastors and tell the pastors, please, whatever you do, I don't want this book to turn out to be something that the people are, uh, you know, are flocking over. I'd rather have them flock to the Bible. It wasn't yeah. meant to do this. Please don't That's don't right. make my ministry something other than what it is. And and it's really easy to do. So you know, I, I pray about that, and I, you know, I, the Lord wanted me to share this, and I know what you're saying, Dean. I'm so go ahead, continue. Yeah, there's there's many old denominations that are around right now that've been around for a while, and their doctrines have totally turned away from uh, Jesus Christ. The doctrines are turning for more humanism, are more yeah. uh, earthly things. Right. And so, I mean, over and over, I've had many friends that are pastors of these denominations because we we get the goal of ministering to the denomination. But in that sense, they're, they're crying out that they indeed, many of my colleagues no longer believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. These are pastors in these yeah. denominations. Many of our, my colleagues don't longer believe in the version verse. You know what I mean? They believe in something else. And so, so but they're leading congregations to believe out, you know, that this is no longer of God, and they're looking at something else, and they believe in that's of God. Yeah. But what God is saying here, what Jesus was saying to me, is saying, but those, they get down on their knees and they pray. Okay, they spend time with Him. They will be able to see it. Again. And what they will be able to see is not from their eyes, but from their heart. Yeah. They will know what is right. It's from the heart. You know, it's like the scripture says that He will come and He will write if he's up on our heart. Right. You know, that's what He's doing. He's writing up on our heart. But if people are not praying, and, and I think we talked about this, people are not praying, you know then they won't be able to have that ability to literally be able to see what God wants them to see. Yeah. You know? And and 
died in his bath in that tomb. Now the last one it says visual deception will increase in all areas of the world. That was and visual deception? Visual deception. Okay. You know, all right. We're very visual people. We, we a lot of people say, I want to see the signs and wonders of God. Oh. And I'm thinking the signs and wonders of God are going around you all the time. And and when you say I want to see it, you're saying I want to visually see it through my flesh. And I'm saying you gotta first see it through your spirit before you can see it through your flesh. Mm. Jesus said, I do not do anything that my father has not shown me. Right. He was <laughs> Yeah. No, so I every healing that took place, God showed him the healing. When I pray for people, God shows them that person healed. I see them old. If they're in a wheelchair, I see them walking. If they're blind, I see them see. If they can't hear, I see them see. God shows me that first. So right. when I'm praying to them about them or coming against whatever that situation is, I'm not praying from what I hope would happen. I'm praying what I know will happen. Do you see the difference? Yeah. And but but we want visual visual deception will increase it because we got the internet, we got cell phones. Oh man, look at that. We got a way to do you see people all the time. Me and you Frank, right now. They can literally take that picture you have on YouTube and they could put uh, women bodies underneath both of our pictures. Can they now? Yes. And and then send it out and make it look like we're some kind of freak show. Right. And and some people would believe that. Yeah, I, I, yeah. You know, so that's people, it's going to spread. That's what the Lord told you—the visual deception. Yeah, around the, and 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 the, and it, it, but the only way that we're going to be able to not us that are born again, us that are no Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, is to be praying, is to be with the Father. You know, in in Revelation, there is a time when the prophet comes. You know that, and he has signs and wonders. Remember that? Yeah. Okay. Well, how do you know the difference between the signs and wonders of God and the signs and wonders of the devil? Right. Now, he, now Dean is talking about the false prophet that's coming that will aid the Antichrist. It says that he will be able to do these uh, miracle signs and wonders. And uh, you're, you're absolutely right, Dean. And this is why I tell people it's so important to read the whole Bible uh, yeah. and to study the Word because you need to be able to discern what is truth from deception right. and what is that's a delusion right from the truth. Yeah. Uh, so that's what, what this is all about here is, is and I really believe that it's trying to set us up, me and you and anyone else that knows Jesus Christ, for for that time that we're not deceived by those false things that go around there. I've got uh, people that I know and I've seen even myself that when they're around people that are uh, demonic or, or they have Satan uh, um, attributes that they do these, these, these wonders. And I can see people getting, wow, that's wonderful. That must be God. No, it ain't that the devil. Right. But they don't know because they've been deceived by what they see instead of themselves seeing it from their heart. Right. You know? All right. And it, <clears throat> well, Dean, let me. We're at the 14 minute mark. Let me stop right here. And if you can, can you do another segment here? Yeah, I can. Okay, great. So. Uh, if you're you're watching a video, just scroll down, and we're gonna hit uh, video number eight. Thank you.